Hey everyone, today we are back with part two of my sequence tutorial. So if you haven't seen part one, check that out. You can download the blackout file and the capture file we're using and follow along. We're gonna kick it up a notch and look at some real scenarios where after you've programmed everything, things are gonna get moved around. That's something we face all the time on a film set, so we'll be looking at what happens if you take a sky panel from the green screen set and move it to the bedroom. What happens if you bring a Titan tube that was doing an effect on the car process set and bring that into the bedroom? And then what happens if that Titan tube dies? We're gonna look at all of that, so grab your iPads and let's get going. Okay, here we are in the file that we had last time. If you remember, we had three sequences, one, two, and three. Sequence one here, if I take it down and up, that was for our green screen set on the left. In the middle, we have our bedroom set on sequence two here. And then on the right, we have our car process set on sequence three. So we're gonna be looking at the bedroom set. So I can uh, go into my camera favorites here, zoom into set two here. And the idea with this tutorial is what if a unit from the green screen set got brought over to the bedroom set? And what if a unit from the car process set also got brought over to the bedroom set and how to deal with that? I know it's not super realistic, but let's say they got a sky panel off the grid of the green screen set and brought it over to the grid of the bedroom set. You'll notice if I bring up the green screen set, now I have this sky panel that is tied in with the green screen set. So the first thing I wanna do here is remove it out of the green screen set. Remember that you wanna think of sequences as layers. So I don't want any data that's in my bedroom layer to be also in my green screen layer. Because if I need them to be active at the same time, one of them could start overwriting the other. And I just wanna make things easy on myself. So the first thing that we need to do is remove that sky panel that we took out of that green screen sequence, which was sequence one. Because as you can see again, if I change this sequence, it's affecting my bedroom set now that we brought that sky panel in, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna turn my green screen sequence off here. I'm gonna go into my fixtures tab, go into looks, and I wanna make sure I'm in this main sequence here, okay? So it says green screen at the top. That's what I want to look for. I don't know which sky panel this electrician grabbed. And really, I don't know which sky panel I dragged into capture. So I'm going to show you a quick trick that I do to figure it out. I know it's one of these sky panels. So I'm going to click 601. And then with my finger, I'm going to press and hold the full key up here. It's this button up here. So I'm going to press and hold that. And then with my other finger, I'm gonna click this next arrow. So these are the next and last buttons while holding that. So I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna next, 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 next until it lights up and it's 607. Okay, great. So I have 607 selected, which is actually my first step. And again, I need to make sure I'm in the sequence and look that I want to remove it from. So I wanna take it out of my green screen sequence and I can see up at the top, that's what I have selected. And if I look at the left in my looks tab, I see that I'm also in this sequence. So with 607 selected, I can hit update. And then I'm going to unselect manual values because we have none. I'm going to go to selection only because 607 is selected in yellow. And I'll select remove. Now what this combination does is it's going to remove every parameter for whatever selection you have. In this case, that's exactly what I want. I want to remove 607 entirely from this sequence. So I'll hit update. Now, if I go to my faders tab and bring up the green screen sequence, you'll see it's completely removed from that sequence. If I go to my wide shot here, you can see that all the other sky panels in the sequence kept all of their values. I just removed 607 out. So now it's just a matter of programming in some data for 607. Okay, if we remember in this bedroom set, we have two looks. Look one here is just this normal base look. And then if I click look two, it turns the bathroom light on. Maybe we brought the sky panel over because the producer said it was too dark and we need a lot of fill. So now we just have to program 607 into our bedroom sequence. The first thing that we want to do is make sure we're in our looks tab up here and then select the sequence that controls our bedroom, which was sequence two here. And you can see both my bedroom looks appear. Remember, we had two looks, one that was just the static look, and look two here, which turns the bathroom light on. 
and up at the top, I can see I'm in my bedroom look and in sequence two. So now I have everything correctly selected to program new data in. I'm gonna grab 607 by tapping on it, and then I'll go into my fixture controls. I'll set the color temperature to 7000, and I got to this calculator by double tapping. And let's set the intensity to 10%. That's definitely too much for my taste, but let's just say that's what they want, and at least it will be obvious to us to see what we're doing. Now I have a choice. If I go back to my looks tab, I could record this as a third separate look. If this is isolated and you're not doing the gag anymore, maybe you want to do it this way. In this case, this was fill that we added, so we want it to apply on both looks. I'm going to update by clicking update here, and you'll see I have options. Manual values is exactly what you want. Now, even though this value would track through because we were using manual values only, I can select the next look because I want it to be in look two or all following here to make sure it's in all the other looks. You'll see we also have options to target the previous look and all previous looks. I'll go ahead and update with these selections. Now you can see our fill stays on as I cycle through the two looks. If I go to my fader page, you can see my green screen set is still totally independent, and so is my bedroom set, but now it has our sky panel added on. And you can see, no matter which look we're in, our sky panel that we added is still on. Now let's take this a step further and add a Titan tube from our process set. If I bring up our process set here, you can see that we have some Titan tubes doing a process type chase. Let's say they brought in this Titan tube to be a backlight, but we definitely don't want it doing that chase, but we also need to program in a way that keeps the chase on the other set safe, so that will still work. As you can see here, we have the tube doing the chase, and we don't want that anymore. So this tube was part of an effect. If I go to my effects tab here and look at my car process tubes, you'll see I used group one to make that effect. You'll see why in a moment, but you always want to record effects from a group because it allows you to easily edit the selection later without having to rebuild your effect. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the effects by hitting this stop, and I believe this is tube 201. Yes. So what I need to do is take it out of the group that the effect was made with. Because remember, I want the effect to keep playing on the other set, but have the tube totally isolated here. So I'll go to my groups tab and select Titan group effect, which is group one. Remember, we saw that because if I go to my effect here, I can see that group one is what was used to build the effect. So I'll select group one and I'll unhide my cells so we can see what we're doing. You can see I have all these cells selected because it was a pixel effect. And now I'll say minus 201 because 201 was the tube we wanted to remove. And you can see it takes all of the pixels for 201 out of that selection. So now I'm going to overwrite this group. I'll hit record. I'll make sure I'm in groups here. And then I'll change this number to one because I want to overwrite group one. And I'll keep the same name. I'll call it Titan Effect Group and save and it will prompt me if I want to overwrite, and I do. Now, I'll play the effect, and you'll see nothing is happening to our tube. But if we look at our car process set, the effect is still playing over the other tubes. And now, just like before, I want to take 201 out of the car process sequence. I'm going to select it, go to my looks tab, change the sequence because I want to be in my car process sequence. I'm going to hit update and I'll change this to selection only because I have 201 selected. I'll X out and show you 201 is selected. So I'll hit update. I will say selection only and remove. And since I have multiple looks in the sequence, I'll make sure to do all following all previous to make sure it gets rid of all of the data for all of the looks and I'll update, and it goes to zero. I'm gonna hit clear. I'll go back to my bedroom sequence. So let's say they wanna use 201 to be a backlight extending the practicals. 
I'll select this, make sure it's on 28 by double clicking, 2800 Kelvin. And then I'll set it to full by saying at full enter. And there we go. Now, again, in looks, I'm going to go here and just make sure I'm in sequence two. And I'll update both looks by hitting update. Manual values only is fine. And then all previous, since I'm in look two, and update. And now as I cycle through the looks by clicking these buttons down here, you'll see the Titan tube stays on. Okay, I'm gonna throw one more thing in and let's say 201 was at full for like three hours and then it dies and we need to grab another tube but have it do the exact same thing as 201. This happens all the time, right? So pause the video here and repeat all the same steps but with 202. So pause the video and then we'll come right back. Uh, wait, I've gotta do it. Okay, here we are in capture. I've deleted 201, they took it off set, and I put in 202. So now, how do we copy the data over? Well, of course, we have a button for that. You're going to select 201 by tapping on it, and now you can go here to where it says copy and use copy to, and you can click on 202. Now, if you hit enter, you'll see it gives all of the data from 201 to 202 as manual values. So now let's make sure in our looks page, we're in the correct sequence and looks, and we can update manual values only, all following, all previous, and boom. Now 202 has all of that info. And if we want extra credit, we can even remove 201 out of this sequence, just like we did before with the other examples. We can select 201, update, selection only, remove values, all previous, all following, that removes it out of everything. Now, if we go to our faders page, you can see our bedroom fader has control of that tube in both looks as we cycle through them. And our car process is still running its effect, albeit with a few less tubes. And our green screen is still up and running. Okay, I know that was a bit more complex than the last one, but hopefully following along has cemented some of these ideas, updating your looks, overwriting your groups. These are all common workflow things that once you understand what they fundamentally do will be a game changer in your workflow. As always, feel free to jump in the Facebook group and let me know if you have any questions. And until next time, let me know in the comments what you wanna see more of.